So, your hands just aren't keeping up like they used to, huh? Well then you, my friend, need to make time for these four guitar drills that you can do every time you have your guitar in your hands. And just a quick spoiler, later on in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a free gift that's gonna rapidly improve your guitar playing. So sit tight, stay tuned, you'll be getting your hands on this in just a short time from now. Okay, now let's get right into these four drills. Drill number one is actually the easiest. and doesn't even require your guitar if you don't have it on you. This is gonna be a finger isolation exercise that only really requires a flat surface. So if you have a desk or even your guitar, right? If it happens to be flat, you could use that if you want to, like lay it on your lap, or you can even use your hand like this because you're gonna be working your other hand, predominantly your fretting hand. But this is great for your picking hand as well for like uh, practicing uh, this particular exercise for uh, playing finger style. But essentially, this finger isolation exercise, we're just gonna be taking each finger, lifting it and dropping it one at a time, nice and slow, just like this. It looks kind of silly. Kind of looks like my hand is doing, like my fingers are doing leg lifts. <laughs> But it's really, it's more of a, um, a neurological exercise, you could say, right? Because it's like, I'm making sure that my brain is telling my hand just one finger at a time because I know instinctively or habitually, whatever it is, it, I want to send all, like more than one finger up, right? But this is kind of like saying like, nope, one finger at a time. Starting with the thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. And you're not, you don't need to stretch them like too high. Just, just show that they have autonomy, right? Just let each finger... Have a go. And you kind of work your way backwards like that. This I actually learned when I took uh, piano lessons uh, for a few months. And uh, that was actually the most valuable thing I learned from those lessons because it actually really helped me with guitar playing. So it's a very simple exercise you can do literally anywhere, even if you're just on a plane and you just you know, pull out your tray and you just do it or on a desk or if you happen to not have access to a flat surface for whatever reason, you just take your hand and you just do that or your knee or something, you know, just something to get to get uh, used to your fingers moving independently like that, right? And like I said, it helps with your uh, picking hand too, right? I'm not really doing this in any uh, specific order, but just to kind of show you that each of my fingers are on their own in a way, even though it's like, <laughs> they really want, like even now, after years of doing this, they still just want to just blah, like do whatever they want to do. But it's a great, it's a great exercise, especially as a warm up to just again, like kind of uh, uh, hone in on like your brain, telling your hands what you know it needs them to do, what it needs your fingers to do. And believe me, this is going to pay dividends when it comes to playing guitar, especially when it comes to drill number two, which is all finger isolations. But this time we're actually going to be on our fretboards playing them. So it's called the spider climb. And what it is, is you're going to start on the first fret with your first finger. So this first part of it, we're going to correspond a finger to a fret. So we have first finger in charge of the first fret, second finger in charge of second fret, third finger, third, fourth finger, fourth, you get the idea, right? So with this spider climb exercise, which you may be familiar with the spider walk, right? Or maybe even the drunken spider walk. This one's a little bit different and it's a lot harder, right? Which is why it needs those finger isolations. It'll really, really help you. So starting with fret number one with your first finger, we play that. And then fret number two, we're gonna play on the A string, right? So the string below with our second finger. And then we're gonna play the uh, third fret on the string below that, the D string with our third finger. And then our pinky is gonna play the fourth fret on the string below that, which is the G string on the uh, fourth fret, as I said, with our fourth finger. And that's just the first half of <laughs> each part of this. And, and this is gonna part its way across your whole fretboard. So we start with the first fret on the E string, second fret on the A string, third fret on the D string, and then fourth fret on the G string. And what we're gonna do now is bring, we're gonna bring our first finger down to the first fret of the G string, and then we're gonna kinda do the inverse of this. Then our second finger is gonna play the second fret of the D string, and then our third finger on the third fret of the A string, and then pinky is gonna be on the fourth fret of the E string. So we have this, these eight notes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right? We're essentially gonna be doing those groupings of those eight notes, but we're gonna be traveling not only up and down the strings, but up the frets as well, right? But just, just focus on getting those eight notes, that eight note pattern comfortable, right? Where we're essentially moving in this kind of, um, 
I don't even know what you would call it. It's sort of a weird, it's like not quite linear, but sort of, you know, in the sense that we're just going across the strings like that, right? And then. It's, you know, not very musical, but it's very, very good for our fingers, right, as an exercise. So we're starting off with this, right, on the, uh, starting on the first fret. Then we're going to take this entire thing, this eight note grouping, and we're going to adjust it down a string. So it's going to start on the A string now instead of the low E string. And then back, right? So it's, it's uh, essentially first fret on the A string, second fret on the G, uh, D string, third fret on G, fourth fret on B, and then first finger comes down to first fret on B, second finger on second fret of G, third finger on third fret of D, and then pinky on the fourth fret of A. Right? Same eight notes, right? Or same uh, eight note pattern. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to do the same thing, but we jump it up starting on the D string. All right? And that's just the first four frets, right? But the, the thing is, you want to get that, uh, that eight note pattern down. And then know that the next thing, once we get those first, that first eight note pattern down, which by the way, when you pick this, I recommend alternate picking. This is a great exercise for alternate picking, right? Especially because you're going to be picking uh, one uh, note per string. So you're going to be picking down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's a great way to, in, a sen uh, in essence, right? isolate your alternate picking, right? Because it's not like you're alternate picking a bunch of times on one string. You have to move on to the next string pretty quick. Right, and then remember, when we do that first no uh, eight note grouping, we're gonna do the same thing, just down a string. Then down a string. Oh. It's so easy to get your fingers tripped up on this one. And believe me, I like to this day, this is a very essential exercise, even for me. So if I'm like backstage before a show, trying to get my fingers warmed up, there's really nothing better than this exercise right here. And once we're done doing the spider climb on the first four frets, which is just gonna be three groupings of those eight notes, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the first group. Second group is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Third group is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Then we're done with the first four frets. But now that we're done and we're leaving off here with our pinky, on the uh, fourth fret here on the uh, D string, we're going to slide it up to the fifth fret and we're gonna essentially start over. And we start over by, you know, starting with the fifth fret here, we're gonna go five, four, three, two, but on the D string, G string, B string, and high E string, right? And then our pinky's gonna reach over and play five, four, three, two, again, starting with our pinky on the fifth fret, right? And then third finger on the fourth fret of the B string, then uh, second finger on the third fret of the G string, first finger on second fret of the D string. All right, so when we've, when we've gone from the first four frets, all right, and then from here, pinky reaches over, we're gonna be climbing back up the strings now, starting on the fifth fret of the A string, and then climbing back up to the high E string. So it definitely seems like a lot is going on, but just focus on those groups of eight notes, right? Just eight notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And then you're playing three groups of those in each like groupings of four frets. So it's like, if you compartmentalize it like that, it's a lot easier to wrap your head around instead of thinking of like, I'm literally playing all the notes. And then from there, if you're feeling daring, you can keep it going all the way up your fretboard. For me, I just get a few frets up and I'm like, all right, I got it. And one last thing about this exercise, it's great for you to practice your alternate picking because you're just picking across one string at a time. So it's not like you're alternate picking a bunch of times on one string. You gotta be quick to change strings. So you're going like down, up, 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 right? Or you can practice sweep picking, in which case I'd recommend doing it a lot slower, but you can start by doing a down, you know, a downward sweep on the first four notes and then upwards on the last four notes, and then just work your way up with that.
however you do it, right? Just really focus on your picking and try to uh, pick softly, right? This doesn't require a really hard attack, right? Because the softer you pick, the easier it is your pick for your pick to just kind of glide across the strings. And since we're only, you know, essentially picking one note per string, the less resistance we have going from, you know, as far as like your pick hitting the string, the better. And hey, real quick, if you're finding value in this lesson and you can see how effective these guitar drills are just from the first two that we've covered so far, then please let me know by liking this video and subscribing to the YouTube channel. It's really the only way that I know that what I'm doing is working for you. Okay, let's get right back into it. The third guitar drill that you should practice every day is what I like to call the wandering spider. So we're still keeping up with that spider theme, but don't worry, this is actually a little bit easier, I think, than the spider climb, and it allows you to traverse the fretboard a whole lot faster. So we start with the first four frets in typical spider exercise fashion, right? We're gonna do the first four frets on the same string. So on the low E string. Then when we move on to the A string, we're actually gonna shift up a fret. So we're gonna move up to the second fret on the A string doing those four frets. And then moving up to the D string, we do the same thing on those four frets. Moving up to the G string, again, moving up a fret and then going up four. Then B string, same thing, just one fret at a time as we go up uh, each string, right? And then finally, we're gonna reach right here on the uh, high E string, the sixth fret. Right, so instead of playing this, right, just going up in the normal spider walk, we're gonna be traveling, right, by going up a fret with each string that we uh, come across. We find ourselves walking right up to this area right from here, which is pretty cool. But once we're here, what happens next, Eddie? This is exactly what happens. We're gonna go starting on the uh, fret above where, you know, from where we started, not from where we finished, where we started, right, on the sixth fret. We're gonna start on the uh, seventh fret in this case, going up four frets. And then first finger climbs up to the next string uh, in the next fret, you know, fret over. And then next string, next fret over. Next string, next fret over. And then same deal, next string, next fret over. So we've essentially gone from here to here to here and just that one little spidering, wandering kind of movement. Now to make it even more interesting, uh, we can actually go backwards. So instead of, you know, cause we're obviously gonna run out of frets, we don't necessarily need to go any further up here, but we can go backwards, right? So once we reach that, that's the 14th fret of the low E string, then we can just go backwards. So we're gonna be going down four frets, right? And then when we go down a string, we go down a fret. Oh, there we go. So it's literally just walking backwards that whole exercise that we just did, right? So we're gonna wander up. I'm just doing this fast just to demonstrate. Then once we get here. So it's like we're just walking in reverse. Right? But when you're practicing this, right, if this is a if this is an exercise or at least a a way of using your fingers that's unfamiliar to you, I strongly recommend that even though we're doing that whole, that cool wandering thing and then the instant replay kind of thing, is to do it in slow motion, right? Start slow, get comfortable, starting with just those first four notes. And the same applies, by the way, to the spider climb, especially to the spider climb, right? Because there's a whole lot going on. So you just gotta really slow down, focus on like, let's say the eight note groupings of the spider climb, or just like the four note run with each string on the traveling spider, right? And all we're doing is just moving up a fret with each string. Right, but what you wanna do actually is try to make it flow. So not what I just did there where it was just, right, you wanna make it flow. So it's just continuing. So that might require slowing down a bit so that you can 
really focus on hitting the right notes. And, and, and just if you want to be a little extra militant with yourself, which I will always advocate because it only makes you better as a guitar player, right? Practice makes perfect. It's true. <laughs> Is uh, if you find yourself messing up, right? If your fingers trip up, if you're getting impatient, anything like that, you know, take a little breather, take a break, come back and start all over, right? Just with that exercise. So if you make it all the way up here, you know, you're like, ah, oh, crap, I missed a string or whatever, or a note. And it's like, okay, if I'm not feeling like starting over right in that moment, just like go grab a beer or whatever your favorite beverage is and then come right back and then just give it a shot, but start over. And however slow or however fast you do it, you wanna do it accurately, you wanna do it precisely, and you wanna feel good about being able to travel all the way up there and back you know, in, in a way that was actually good and didn't have, you know, too many drastic mistakes. So that's just a great way to do it is don't get down on yourself if you're making mistakes as you're going through this. This is all part of practice. Everything that you're learning in, you know, with, with guitar, but this really applies in life. Let's be honest. I mean, there's certain things that if you're developing a new skill, you're, you're going to have to get through a mountain of mistakes and that's okay. The mistakes really never stop. Like even in this video, you've seen me make plenty of little mistakes here and there. It happens, you know, but that's okay. We just keep it moving. So if you make a mistake, you just like take a little breather and then try it again and then you'll be right as rain. And last but not least, we have drill number four, which is actually my favorite. This one I use even when I'm playing live. It's a lot of fun. This is something that a lot of guys in Nashville do. It's called the Joe Walsh lick and it's fun. It's just fun to play and it sounds really silly, but cool in a way. You'll see. And it's actually very, very relevant to drill number two, which is the spider climb, but it's a much simpler version of it that can be actually used in a way that's somewhat musical. So this dissonant yet fun Joe Walsh lick goes like this. And essentially, like right here, I chose to do it in this position. It actually is right over the top of the A minor pentatonic pattern, right? It just sits right on top of it, right? And it sounds, like I said, dissonant, but it's actually a lot of fun. It's a great exercise, but it's also something you can kind of pull out if you're just kind of feeling silly, right, during a jam or something. If you're just like... You know, just like, just, it's just something that just will kind of make you sound like, whoa, were they doing, was that jazz? What was that, right? But, you know, of course, this is something that we, you know, uh, we've observed Joe Walsh do, and it's just like a lot of fun. So we like to, we like to bust that out. So what we're doing here is a simplified version of the spider climb. So in this case, right, like I said, being right there in the neighborhood of A minor, right? We're going to take our first finger. We're going to play the fifth fret of the uh, low E string. And then second finger is going to play the sixth fret on the A string. And then our third finger is going to play the uh, uh, sorry seventh fret of the D string. And we're moving in order where it's like with every string is a, is a fret up. But we're not, you know, we're not using our pinky for this. It's really just these first three fingers. But once we do that, we're going to do the same thing, but starting on the A string, then the D string, and then the G string. So we're doing this, let's see, one, two, three, four. So it's four note groupings, right, of these three notes. So these three notes, one, two, three, four times, right? So one, two, three, four. And then we've covered, right, that, like the all six strings on that chunk. And if you want to use this just like the spider climb, you can throw it up, you know, a fret. Nope. Right? You just kind of keep it going if you want to do it that way. But if you want to use in kind of a you know semi-musical context, like I said, it's sort of a fun little lick to throw in there. Uh, you can do that over a minor pentatonic. So if you're in the in the case of uh, playing an E minor pentatonic, right? You could throw that in there, but you're just going to be starting it on the uh, the twelfth fret in this case, right? So it literally just right over the top of the pentatonic. You know, so if you were to you know adjust it to any key, let's say, all you have to do is just find the root note on the uh, uh, on the low E string, and then from there you just play out the pattern as you know it. Right, those three notes in four groupings, right, or four groups of those three notes, and then you find yourself playing the Joe Walsh lick in any key. Another thing that personally I love to do with this lick is to practice my banjo rolls, right, which is a hybrid picking technique. This is optional. This is something that you're more than welcome to try if you've never done this before. Or if you, you have done this and you want to kind of get better at it, 
what I recommend is with each three notes, and this is why it's perfect for hybrid picking because typically when you're hybrid picking, um, you're using your thumb and, and first finger to hold the pick, and then you have your middle finger and your third finger here, your ring finger. I keep going back and forth between middle, third, whatever. It's all the same, right? <laughs> middle finger, second finger, third finger is ring finger. Uh, between those other two fingers, so you have three appendages to work with when you're hybrid picking, right? So you'll start with the first note with the pick, second note with your middle finger, and then third note with your ring finger. In that order, right? So you're going pick, middle, ring, pick, middle, ring. And when you move up, right, pick, middle, ring, pick, middle, ring, you're doing the same thing, right? And personally, I can get through this lick a whole lot faster when I banjo roll it. You know? So it's, again, it's a cool thing that you can practice like as an exercise, but you can also use it as a lick. So next time you're playing, you know, uh, some James Gang, right? <laughs> you know, I'm just having fun right now. But anyway, that's the kind of fun thing that I like to do with that. Um, but yeah, that's the Joe Walsh lick. That is drill number four. And that concludes our four epic guitar drills for this lesson. So hopefully today you're walking away with one, two, maybe even four guitar drills to add to your daily routine. And I promise you, if you use these four drills, you will see dramatic improvements in your speed, control, and dexterity. How do I know? Worked for me. All right, now what do you say I tell you how to get your hands on that free gift I was talking about? Well, most of my students here at Guitar Mastery Method happen to be over the age of 40. And every year it just starts to get a little bit more challenging on your hands, and you sometimes find yourself struggling to keep up. Maybe you know how that goes. Well, my team has developed a guitar analysis tool called the Progress Killer Quiz. And in just 30 seconds, you're gonna find out exactly what it is that's holding you back from playing guitar the way you wanna play it and it's gonna send you a customized training video to fix it, absolutely free. So click here to take that progress killer quiz and I'll send you a customized video plus a bunch of reference material to help you conquer it. I wanna thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.